Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to our first Facebook Live Lunch and Learn for our Step Forward to Cure TSC Hybrid Global Walk, Run, Ride. I'm Kari Rosbeck, President and CEO of the TSC Alliance. And today I'm joined by... Ryan Beebe, uh, Manager of Annual Giving and Corporate Sponsorships. Uh, so ready to, to kick off what's going to be a very busy, uh, exciting uh, week ahead. That's right. Very excited to have you with us today, Ryan. Yeah. Um, last year, Lisa Moss and I hosted these Lunch and Learns every single uh, day. This year, we're shaking it up a little bit. Either Lisa or I will be hosting, but we're bringing in guest hosts like Ryan. Um, so for those of you who may or may not know Ryan Beebe, I'm going to have him just give us a little uh, introduction to who you are and how you came to be. Yeah, exactly. So um, if if over the past two years, you've heard TSC paired with hot sauce, you may be <laughs> um, familiar uh, with my name, we we got involved, we have a um, two sons, uh, older brother, Tyler, who's five and younger brother, Parker, who is three. Um, Parker has TSC. And um, we really, um, th the first year was really just understanding TSC really getting to, to um, just learn about the, the journey that he was going to be going on. And then over the past two years, um, we're involved with a, a hot sauce based fundraiser and really got to to know um, the the alliance and, and people within the community. And um, I think I'm now on month two of actually working for the alliance. Uh, so excited to be here. You have done an awesome <laughs> job in raising awareness in very unique ways, yeah. having been tortured by you. <laughs> no, it was great fun. I yeah. really, really enjoyed um, being part of getting saucy with Parker B. It was, it was yeah. great. Yeah. Temporary pain for, for what hopefully can lead to uh, um, a lifetime or um, much larger gains. Um, from what we've done. That's right. That's yeah. right. So before we start today's interviews, um, Ryan, why don't you thank our national sponsors? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and without these national sponsors, we really couldn't do what we are doing at the, the level we are. So so certainly thank you to all those national sponsors. Um, we have Marinus Pharmaceuticals, Jazz Pharmaceuticals, Nobel Pharma, Ovid Therapeutics, UCB, Upshire Lab, Upshire Smith Labs, Mass Mutual, Special Care, and Bridge Bio. So certainly thank you to all those national sponsors. That's, that's right. And today we actually have two of yes. those national sponsors with us. Yeah. So I'm going to intro our first guest um, by saying that Upshur Smith Laboratories LLC is a 100 plus year min or Yes, your old Minnesota-based pharmaceutical company. Upshur Smith strives to improve the health and lives of patients through an unwavering commitment to high-quality products and sustainable growth. Now part of Suai Pharmaceutical Company Limited, they offer a broad array of generic and branded medications. They go, oh my, way above and beyond, striving for uninterrupted supply, quick delivery, and in-depth and patient knowledge. So when the company began uh, putting together their generic formulation of Vigabatrin, now called Vigadrone, uh, to treat infantile spasms, they spent two years working with the TSC Alliance and other advocacy groups. And really true to their company culture, they wanted to develop the best most patient-centric program possible. Um, they also recognize that infantile spasms constitutes a medical emergency. And Vigadrone launched in 2018, and Upshur Smith continues to offer a really robust patient-focused assistance program. Today, we are joined by Jim Moss, Vice President of Marketing and Market Access. So welcome, Jim. Thanks for joining Thank us you. today. Thank you, Kari. It's a pleasure to be here. Really excited to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Upshur Smith, other than the title that I just mentioned? Sure. Uh, so I married up almost 28 years ago. I think that's what they say in the South. Married up to my wife, Marlene, uh, about 28 years ago. We have four children, a uh, 23-year-old daughter. I have twin 21-year-old uh, boys uh, who keep me young and age me all at the same time, and a 17-year-old daughter, and uh, a new puppy, a nine-week-old puppy. So if you hear something in the background, I go on mute. It's probably because she's not 
happy being in her kennel right now. Uh, <laughs> but that's a little bit about me. And then uh, I've been with Upshur Smith for 32 years. Wow. Uh, so in fact, I met my wife there. So it, it is, uh, it's more than just a job. Uh, it really is just, uh, in some ways, it feels like I'm working with my best friends every day to live out the mission that you described. Um, it's a special place to work. Um, you know, I was looking at the video that we, um, which we'll talk a little bit about, but I think the tenure of the seven people in that video, the average tenure is 20 years. Wow. So uh, a lot of us grew up together in the business, really trying to solve problems for doctors and patients and, and pharmacists. And my role today is uh, to lead our marketing organization. Um, and Vigadrone is part of that to help identify new products, new services um, that we can bring to market that will help uh, more families and providers. And then to ensure that those products are available, market access, just ensure the products are available on formularies after a doctor writes a prescription that the patient can get access to them. So that's a little bit about me and my, my role at Upshur Smith. Perfect. Thank you, Jim. It sounds like you got a handful there uh, with kids, <laughs> <Correct. new> dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is, that is for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for that background. Can, can you also just tell us a little bit about some of your favorite educational projects um, that, that we've worked on together? Sure. You know, I, we have a team that's worked with Kari in, in the organization for, for some time. So I got together with them and said, what, tell me a little bit about uh, what stands out to them. And what they talked about was the World TSC Conference and then the TSC Navigator. And, and the World TSC Conference, interesting, you know, because at, at Upshur Smith, we have been in women's health, we've been in dermatology, we've been in neurology, we have migraine, we have podiatry, we've worked in a multiple different numbers of disease states uh, in the past. And what really stands out about that conference is when you bring families and providers together, it's really unique, uh, I have to say. And when you have families who have the opportunity to ask questions of uh, providers and bring that those important stakeholders together, along with partners like Upshur Smith, it's a unique environment. And I think that's what resonates so much with um, our team is oftentimes it feels very transactional mm -hmm. when you're, you know, you're a pharmaceutical company and you do this and it's very transactional. Uh, this you feel like you're actually part of a, a community that's putting the patient in, in the middle. Um, so that's what stood out to the team when I talked with them. And clearly TSC Navigator does that. It puts families at the very center of how do you navigate this new journey, Ryan, just like you just described. Uh, and that was special. I know Kari reached out to our team when, when you started that. So those are the two that stood out to, to us. Well, I have never thought of Upshur Smith as being a transactional relationship. Mm -hmm. We have truly valued working together, putting our community first on programs like the patient assistance for uh, Vigadrone. It's just been so important. And I, I'm just so grateful for everything that you've done for the TSC Alliance and that we've actually done together in, in partnership. Yeah, thanks, Kari. It feels very much like a, a partnership. And um, in this day and age, that's incredibly special and getting harder to find, it feels like sometimes. So we're, we're very grateful. Absolutely. So I guess my next question for you is what really stands out about your interaction with the TSC community and the TSC Alliance? You know, I think one of the things that makes the partnership work so well is I, I wrote down the words, you go all in. Um, and that, that's how it feels at, at Upshur Smith. Um, you know, the, the commitment that you show to all of the stakeholders, the families, the patients, the partners, the providers. Uh, there's no, well, we might want to do this, or maybe he's not. I don't think in Kari's vocabulary. Uh, <laughs> I don't think maybe is even an option. If we're going to do something, we're going to go all in. We're going to give it our very, very best shot. And that that's kind of how we think about uh, the relationship that we have with you. At Upshur Smith, and if you're going all in, then that that's what we're going to do as well. And so that's what came to mind when I when you raised that question. Thank Thanks, you, Jim. Thank yeah. you.
Yeah, talking about sort of going all in and, and sort of leading into this next um, question was, uh, I guess on Friday, you had sent over your video uh, that, that the group had put together um, for, for the um, Step Forward um, campaign. And I just, you can tell that the group is having so much fun in, in putting those <laughs> yeah. videos together um, and, and really just what sort of the inspiration behind creating those videos from the team. You know, I think it comes back to the we're all in, right? I mean, we we often say we have, I told you, I think the average tenure in that video was 20 years. Yeah. So these are people that know each other incredibly well, are not, they're totally comfortable taking chances together to have some fun. Uh, we say we're, we always say we're either highly committed or should be committed. Uh, <laughs> and the video might prove that we probably should be committed. Um but it's part of the relationship, right? Um, that if if we're going to do anything, let's just give it let's just give it our very best, and that's kind of what it is. And uh, kari has been all in with us from the beginning, and very transparent, and um, very honest, and saying uh, you know the feedback has been constructive and it's been productive, and so that's just the nature of I think any relationship as a company. That's how we think about it. We're going to do what we say we're going to do. Uh, and that just, that's just kind of what came through. But I have to admit that video, when it started, we had no idea what was going to happen. <laughs> we had just kind of basic premise. And after that, it was, uh, yeah, there were a lot of outtakes, I guess you might say, that went with that video. But it was a lot of fun. Thanks for acknowledging it. Well, I look forward to seeing what your video is every year. Uh, your videos are probably the most creative. I, I'm thinking back to our 45th anniversary where you all uh, did the video where um, you were playing poker and it was poker. like, oh, hi, everybody at the gala. Um, it was awesome. But that also went with a, a, a wonderful grant to kick off our newborn screening project. So we we really value our, our relationship with you in every single way. Truly, truly grateful. Thank you. And, and sort of to that relationship aspect that, that we do have with you, um, what's sort of your favorite aspect about working with the TSC Alliance? You know, I think it, I probably sound like I'm repeating myself, but this idea of genuinely bringing all the stakeholders together who can make a difference to improve outcomes and put, put the patient at the center, um, it probably feels like just every day to you, because uh, this is how you're wired. And this is, I know, Akari, this is your vision. And that's what you do every day. Uh, I would just tell you that it's it's not that way everywhere. Um, and that's what's really special to us is when you can align the, the commitment and you can get the incentives, if you will, aligned. So everybody's pulling in the same direction. Uh, you can really move mountains. And uh, I think there's a lot of organizations that struggle with that, but the fact that you're able to do that is what stands out to us as a company. Keep up well, the good work. <laughs> thank you for helping us move mountains. We couldn't do it alone. And um, since I, I spend some of my time with my kids in Minnesota, it's a special treat uh, to really be able to spend so much time with you and your company in your headquarters. And um, I've really missed that during the pandemic. So excited to get back yeah. and, and see everybody there, Jim, truly. Hey. Um, so our last question is, because I think we are going to create a word cloud. We're asking everybody this question. So what three words would you use to describe the TSC community? Uh, three words, caring, Genuine and bold in big capital letters, which we love. Uh, like I said, uh, you'll take on any challenge and we want to be a partner to help you take on all those challenges. I love that. Yeah, that's great. Bold, oh. all caps. All I caps. love it. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Jim, for your time today. And I hope to see you in a few weeks. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thanks thank so you, much. Take care. And for everybody out there, I know that we will be showing this latest Upshur Smith video. I can't <laughs> wait to uh, for everybody to see their creativity come to life.
Yeah, this is uh, one of my first times getting to to really see them come in before they're shared. So uh, it was very entertaining to, <laughs> to see as I got that in my inbox. And as soon as you shared it, I opened it. I was like, <laughs> what are they going to do this year? So yeah. I love that they get everybody on board. They were really yeah. the, the first company partner that did a video for the walks yeah. and really have inspired everybody else to step up their game. Yeah, I have to go back and watch some of their previous ones now. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> they all build on each other. But speaking of stepping up their game, I think there's no greater partner than our next uh, um, interviewee, and I think you're going to you're going to yes. introduce her. Yes, I will. Um, so, Mass Mutual has uh, the single focus of helping people to secure their future and protect the ones they love. This guiding principle is behind everything they do and every decision they make in delivering products and services to help families achieve their financial goals and protect those who matter most. When caring for a loved one with special needs, you want to provide them with the best quality of life possible. You can get the help you need by coordinating with Mass Mutual Special Care's specially trained professionals to create a holistic life care plan while balancing your own needs and those of your family members. Mass Mutual Special Care provides valuable products and services to help navigate the challenging topics of life insurance, long-term care, special needs trusts, and so much more. And with us today, is Kelly Piacenti, Head of Special Care. Welcome, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Kelly, and, and your role at Mass Mutual Special Care? Sure. I am actually the Head of Special Care. I have about 500 plus advisors around the country that are specially trained to work with families that have a special need. 86% um, of them are like myself. I'm a special needs mom, or I was a special needs mom for many years. I am a mother of four. Unfortunately, I lost my son with special needs about a year ago, but he did tie me to TS. I met Kari, I don't want to say how long ago, <laughs> last years. Um, maybe even longer than that. But my son, Nicholas, had infantile spasms, epilepsy, and many things that people with TSC come across. So we had a uh, really robust, fantastic conversation. Kari got me on the right road with a lot of seizure medications. And in my role at Mass Mutual, as well as MetLife, I was responsible for special needs and really educating our advisors, making sure that they were working with families like ours, they knew the difference. They knew how to help them preserve government benefits, but also gave them the correct information. So one of the things that I do is I'm responsible for the nonprofits that work with special care and TSC was a perfect fit and has been by far, I'd say one of the best partners we've ever had. So love working with you guys and uh, we've learned a lot from you as well. Well, your compassion shows through in everything that you do and your understanding being a, a special needs mom, I think just um, makes it very clear to our community how deeply you care about families. It's, it's really amazing, Kelly. Thank you for everything that, that you do for the TSC community and the TSC Alliance. We're so grateful. Great. We thank you guys. We're honored to have you as our partner. So I have a question for you. Um, how has the pandemic changed or amplified how people are thinking about special needs or financial planning for their loved ones? Well, you know what? I get that question a lot, which is kind of funny because you would think people would say, well, it's the same. People didn't really have time to plan. And it was actually a very scary time for our community in many ways. What we were seeing, and I am, if you couldn't figure it out, on the East Coast, I'm in the New Jersey area, but what we were seeing across the country is that young caregivers were dying. We were seeing it more and more with COVID, and suddenly we had a family with maybe two caregivers down to one, or just a single caregiver that lost their life. So the need for planning for some of our younger families became at the forefront. Before it was kind of, you know, even myself as a, as a parent, it's kind of in the back, you know, I'm young, I'm gonna be here forever, I'm never gonna die. We were starting to see young families have some of these, these um, just being hit with it head on that they were losing 
young caregivers and there was no plan in place. So it's not a good thing. It was a, a terrible thing for many, but a good thing in the way that our community had to start thinking about planning and what if I don't come home? Or what if something mm -hmm. happens? Who's the backup person? What's the plan? Because with our children, it requires a lot of care. Many of them, like my son was nonverbal. There was no one he could tell what he was looking for. So really having a plan in place for our families became super important. And we're seeing more and more younger families now saying, if anything happens to me, this is the plan. And that's really you know, what we wanna see because it's about the person you're caring for, what happens to them. And it's something that as caregivers and parents, we all worry about, but a plan up here is no good if something happens to you. So you really need to get it on paper, write it down, meet with people that can help you, but do something. So if anything happens, there's something there for everyone to follow. Yeah, I think Kelly, a, a lot of people have sort of that the best of intentions or yeah. that have the thought, uh, this is what I'm going to do. But like, as you mentioned, like in, until you sort of write it down or like share with somebody, it's, it's really just up there and nobody knows if so something does unfortunately happen. So thank you for providing that pers perspective. Um, Another question, what is the most important thing someone should know about financial planning for a family member with special needs? It's never too late. I had a call this morning of someone older and said, oh, you know, we never did anything. They're an adult now. I don't really want to do anything. It's never too late. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I always mention to all of our families is there's something called a letter of intent. It's not mm -hmm. legally binding, but it has been used in the court of law. And it's kind of like a letter to the babysitter on steroids. And it gives instruction <laughs> who you want them to live with, who you don't want them to live with. There's no guarantee that a judge will adhere to it, but we have seen that they have looked at it and said, this is the family's wishes. So it's never too late to do something. Update your will, get a special needs trust if you need one, or just do a letter of intent, do something, because there's always an opportunity for us to put that plan in place. And even if it's just writing it in a notebook, do something, but it's never too late. And I tell families that every day. You do, and you have some amazing tools at special care. And I'm, I'm sure there's more that you'd like uh, our community to know. Um, what else should they know about Mass Mutual and your programs and services? Well, I had indicated in the beginning, you know, they're very similar to myself, their parents, their siblings, their caregivers. It's not, you know, you have to plan with us. It's when a family's ready. We provide educational information across the country. We put the information out there. We have an electronic letter of intent. We have many of our forms that families can print off or start the process themselves. But if they are interested in working with someone or sitting down with someone, that actually get it, they get this world, they live in this world, then we do have advisors for them. But at some point in time, you do need a plan. It doesn't matter who you do it with, you have to do it with somebody. Excellent advice. Yeah, it's great that you're able to provide so many resources. And, and as you mentioned a few times, it's it's not too late. If you take the time now, now can be the perfect time um, as opposed to, to holding off on, on some of those things. And I think um, me, being a, a, a parent of somebody, uh, of a child with, with special needs, um, it, it's a good kick in the butt for me to, to go out and um, see, see what, what is out, out there. And I think other people within the community can really take advantage because a lot of times you don't, you, you don't know where to look um, or, or just need that sort of push to be like, hey, this is what, what's out here. And at least that's a, a, a step in, in the forward direction. Um, so. And someone qualified. We always say that you don't have to come to Mass Mutual. Mm -hmm. Just go to yeah. someone that's qualified. What I often say is when you're getting a divorce, you don't go to a real estate attorney. It's the same deal. <laughs> you want to go to somebody that specializes in this area, whether it's an accountant or an attorney or an advisor, you want to speak to them about it and say, you know, how many special needs trusts did you do this year? How many families do you work with? If they tell you, oh, I have one or two families that have a special needs situation, I'd probably run from that. We require that they have the education, that they have a designation in this area, and that they continue to you know, get new information and education on the topic. It's not something 
we want anyone to dabble in. Sounds like you need an electronic letter of intent on steroids. Yeah, right? she needs, she needs yeah, something more than the napkin that we leave <laughs> yeah. uh, when we go she on needs trips. Help. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we all do. It's tough. It's definitely tough. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Kelly. What um, I want to know, what's your favorite aspect about working with the TSC Alliance? You know, it's it's kind of funny because it's it's like a friendship for me. I got to mm -hmm. be honest with you. I love everything they do as a caregiver myself. When I look at the families and I look at the way they're treated and I see the efforts towards these families, it's amazing to me. And it's not a, oh, hi, thanks for coming. You know, great, sit down, learn something, see you later. It's an ongoing friendship. And I've been at meetings and Kari, I really don't know the amount of years, but it's probably close to 15. But the thing is, is that I see the same people and I know them and I know their situation or I know about their kids. And it's not just people within the community. It's anyone that shares or goes to these meetings and it feels like a friendship. It doesn't feel like a business meeting or a nonprofit meeting that, you know, I'll go for 20 minutes. I don't remember anybody and I'll come next year and it's the same deal. I feel like I know them and I feel like it's a friendship, not just for me, but anyone that walks in the door to any of those meetings. Yeah, I would agree. We continue to learn from each other. Um, Kelly and I really try to highlight the programs and services of the TSC Alliance to her mass mutual colleagues and vice versa. Um, and I know exactly how many years it's been, Kelly. It's been 16 years. Oh God, I know times. because <laughs> you were close. Um, the first time we really met in person was the 2006 then National Family Conference. I have been with the organization nearly 21 years and been at five of these conferences. You, as of this summer, will have been at four wow. of these, con almost all of the ones I've been involved with, you have been involved with. And so that kind of commitment and dedication to our community is just, it's awe-inspiring. And I just, I, we can always depend on you and our relationship with you whether you're at Mass Mutual, MetLife, Special Care, you 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 bring Jersey, the, you the love. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. All right. So our last question, again, that we're asking every person we're interviewing, so we can make a word cloud, is what are three words you would use to describe the TSC community? Well, this is easy for me: committed, passion, determination. Uh, it's, you know, the people that I work with at TSC, whether it's parents or caregivers or your staff, I feel it. And I'm sure that anyone that walks in those doors feel it as well. So that passion and commitment is amazing. You're going to find a cure. You're going to get these families everything they need. And really the commitment, there's no, there's no one giving up. I see the same people year after year. And even as we get new ones, I see the same cycle. So Definitely, I am honored to be part of this group, for sure. Well, we're so lucky that you will be at the World TSC Conference and can share all these amazing tools, resources, your deep knowledge about being a special needs caregiver and, and parent and the steps you took and really sharing that with every member of our community means so much. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank wait. you. Thank you, guys. You're doing a thank great job. Guys. Keep it up. We nice will. We'll see, we will see you in Dallas, my friend. I can't wait. That'll can't be a wait. Long trip. <laughs> Thanks for Take joining care. us today. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Um, so you're going to get to work on that letter of intent, huh? Uh, yeah, like I said, something more than the napkin uh, that, that we leave that <laughs> spells out where <laughs> things are going, at least start with that. But, but it's great to you know that sometimes you just need to be reminded or, or pushed a little bit to this is on my to-do list and I should really get it done. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm certainly going to check that out um, further so that um, if something does happen, you're, you're leaving your, your family in a better spot than um, having no clue what your intent was. So. Right. Right. You know, I have always found that I learned the most from members of our community about TSC. That's really, um, over the last 21 years, it's been such an amazing 
roadmap. Yeah. Your family, you and Andrea P Parker have, have really taught me about the new generation of those living with TSC. And so has our next guest. Yeah. So our next guest, David and Rachel Johnson, it looks like it's Rachel. Uh, Dave might be joining us. I know he's in a, a meeting. There he oh, is. There we go. Hi, Dave. Yay. So great to see you. So they currently live in Huntsville, Alabama. They have four beautiful children and their youngest son, my little sweetheart, Noah, uh, was diagnosed with TSC in 2019. And, and that's about the time that I met them. We did a satellite media tour together and that little Noah just stole my heart from, from that moment forward. But He's also a budding guitar player. They recently shared out on Facebook, Noah um, playing bad to the bone, bad to the bone, oh, yes. right, Noah? You gonna play that for me later? <laughs> <laughs> they also won the Spirit Award yeah. at last year's Walk, Run, Ride. And so welcome, Rachel, Dave, and Noah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we know that you have had a unique journey with TSC. Can you tell us a little bit about how Noah was originally diagnosed? Sure. So I had a great pregnancy with, um, with Noah. Um, it was interesting. Our third boy had a stroke in the womb. So my OB wanted to just um, do an extra ultrasound at 34 weeks just to check on things and make sure nothing was um, crazy at the time. And so come to find out, we went to do the 34 week ultrasound and um, they found multiple rhabdomyomas on Noah's heart. And so they immediately at the hospital we were at, they immediately connected me to a geneticist that day. And so I sat down with a geneticist and she explained that we would be looking at a TSC diagnosis more than likely okay. because of the rhabdomyomas. And so um, we knew going into Noah's birth, what we were going to probably be expecting. And so, um, we did an MRI of the brain, um, at birth. And then that officially, um, led us to the TSC diagnosis. Wow. Yeah, that's, um, I was, uh, very similar journeys and, uh, three-year-olds, I think a lot of our paths are, have been the same over the past, past few years. And, uh, was actually taking a look back. Kari had mentioned just the the group and support that that you've had. Um, I was looking back at last year, 206 people um, on Noah's team and have one built out this year. So it's great to have that that support as as um, we we have this event and and others that that people really have your back. Absolutely really amazing. Um, and and. I did want to know how did your family decide to participate in, in clinical research? And from that research, what have you seen as, as the benefits? Thanks, well, I'll take that one. Yeah. And I know you don't want me to speak in as much as you want Noah, uh, his face <laughs> up there. So I can't really compete against that, but I'll, I'll be quick so we can see Noah again. Um, <laughs> for us, when we found out the diagnosis, it was, I mean, it kind of, you know, it, it makes your, as you look back at it, your world kind of stood still for a little while and you just kind of reassessed uh, what was important to you in life. And as we were reassessing, you know, our families, what's the, what is in our family? What are our priorities? And at the very beginning, uh, we said that, that number one, our care for Noah would be absolutely number one. And wherever the best doctors, wherever the people who were doing the research into TSC, that's who we wanted to get plugged into. But then it wasn't necessarily a selfish thing for us just to say, you know, hey, it's only about our kids. And I think everyone has that. They, they want their kids to excel. Um, they want their, the best for their children. Um, so I, I don't think we're, we in the community, you know, I don't think that's, that's everyone's desire. Um, but the second one, for us that we, we decided on as well is how can we move the needle a little bit for the next individual and the family who come with tuberous sclerosis complex where while we were handed a baton of, hey, we're, we're standing on the shoulders of everyone who has done a clinical trial 
And it came to us coming to the scene where we were involved in the first trial that was looking at preventing epilepsy. And that is just groundbreaking and very hopeful for parents, but we know it's not possible without all the other parents who've said, yes, we wanna be involved. Um, and so for us, that was just a natural, yes, we want the best care for our son, but how can we move that needle? And you don't know when you get into TSC what you don't know. And so we were advised, hey, this prevent study, you really want to get into it. And we were you know, informed of that, not even just in the Facebook group, but we had a friend of uh, my brother who his daughter uh, has TSC. And they're like, if you can get into this trial, this is you know, a first of its kind. So looking at all those things that set it up, I mean, we're just grateful that we were able to get into this study where he had additional care and for us, we want to help to push that needle forward for research. And, and even going back to those people who were on the call earlier who were talking, you know, the, the positiveness that the TSC Alliance that we're always just pushing forward of just trying to find um, what is that next step in getting to uh, finding a cure. It may not necessarily a cure, but it's something that is going to um, just move that forward so much farther that those kids who are behind us um, you know, it, it's our way of sharing our gratitude with those who've gone before us where we now can move that needle just a little bit forward, um, as well. And that's kind of how for us getting involved. And then what has it done for us? I mean, the fact that Noah has not had an infantile spasm mm -hmm. for those in the TSC community, you, and maybe have had an experience that. I think for those who have gone through that, that would have been a wish and a hope that you could have said. And now we're three years that, that Noah has had TSC and we haven't had an infantile spasm and not even a single one. And so we're just super grateful and just the hope that that brings to us and that we can share with those others who are coming behind us um, where they'll <laughs> be able to benefit from the work that all of the doctors, and again, it's, it's all those who at the TSC Alliance who put us in you know, contact with those individuals and all the doctors and those who, who even wanted to say, you know, hey, we're busy, but we want to do that additional thing and get another uh, trial in place to see if we can just move this needle forward. So we're just grateful for the community, the doctors, and all those who are uh, just putting that research in and that we can benefit from it. It's amazing the selfless sacrifice, the families that are in prevent. And even, even before that, as you mentioned, Dave, the 28 individuals that were in the um, original Everolimus trial, like that really those sacrifices as families to help the next generation, as well as your own child are the things that really move the needle forward. And I just, I have to thank you. Thank you for helping us and the community move this needle forward. Yeah. I love to hear that. Um, and Noah hasn't had infantile yeah. spasm then that, that's awesome. Um, and, and really, as you mentioned, I think the sort of passing the baton, I think within this community, there's a lot of people that appreciate if you're new to the community, certainly appreciate everything that's yeah. done before you sort of um, come into this world. Um, but, but you also see that so many families like yours are like, all right, how do I take that baton and, and take it even further? Um, so, so that in the future, um, people are in a better spot yeah. um, than, than current and in current day better than they were before. So that's great, your involvement and, and wanting to, to really move forward in any way however it, it sort of fits it's amazing yeah truly truly amazing and, and with that so um just um what what do you think is sort of the most important thing for a newly diagnosed family to know and, and sort of a second question to that what resources would you recommend yeah i'll take this one uh, as well and when you look at it it, it is scary. I mean, you, you can, 
look at all the resources that are available, but at the end of the day, it can be scary, it can be overwhelming. And all of those feelings that you have, there are other people in the community who have had those same feelings. You're not alone. That I mean, you can try to be that that hard, tough guy that you want to be, and, and different people take it differently, and it still does affect you. I mean, that that's just what it is. But there, I don't want it to sound as it's just always a, a negative thing. There, there is hope in it as well. Um, yes, the diagnosis is hard, and there is a time for grieving, and there is all of those things. But there's also great resources. There's great community that we did not like, know it existed around the cause. Um, and the TSC, the community that is here and that is around this complex, I mean, when you, when you just look at it, yes, there's difficult times and you see those things. But man, there's some people who fight and it is just encouraging to see those people who, who won't give up. And you're like, man, that, that's a really rough thing they're going through. And they're resilient. It's just like, wow. I mean, when you see people who are going through that, it, it encourages you, it strengthens you to just, you know, push forward for the next day. And um, one of the things, you know, that I, I, I think of as well is how the TSC Alliance really helped with our information gathering, especially, I mean, even at the beginning, but even now, um, you can Google TSC and you with with information that you have at your fingertips now mm. you're just you're weeding through things you're trying to find out okay what is truth what what am i looking at and what is the way you know move forward moving forward and the tsc alliance isn't the you know, only place that you can find you know good information on it but it has so many different veins that connect you to different research to informational things to even having something that was beneficial for us of an explanation letter to our family and our friends of, hey, we don't even know how to say what tuberous sclerosis <laughs> is right now, <laughs> but here's what we found and here's what it is and come back to us when we can, you know, find out a little more and can maybe explain a little more of it. Uh, but one thing I would encourage as well is don't try to take it all in at the first time. Mm. Maybe you have someone who's an, an infant. Maybe it's someone who's, you know, gone through some infantile spasm and they're two or three or they're five or six or, or whatever that stage is. Don't try to, as those of us who are parents who've known, it's a complex diagnosis that all of these things don't appear at the same time. So don't try to tackle all of those at once. Just try to look at the stage that you're in. And the, the TS Alliance has a great way of, of showing these are, you know, the different ages of this way you could expect. And, and so to break it down in that way, don't, I've always thought, you know, instead of tackling something at one time and, and it's, it seems an overwhelming project, okay, how can we break it up into bite-sized pieces? And so that would be my encouragement is, Yes, it can be scary and it is scary. And there's times that are unsure. And, and yes, you might have uh, like our, our son, he's had status seizures. He's had brain um, surgeries. We're on Everlimus, which we're super grateful for, for that and what that's doing to um, hopefully uh, address a Sega that he has that's growing. And so there, there are things that are, are scary, but try to break it down. And okay, these are the things we have to deal with and, and try to focus on those things. And and enjoy the moments that you have a, a kid who loves to sing bad to the bone. And he, <laughs> he, he wakes up every morning and it, I am not kidding about this. He will say bad to the bone and we know he wants to listen. And it's hard when it's 525 in the morning, he just wants to listen bad to the bone. But hey, enjoy those times where, I mean, you see your kid excel. This, this was for us, it's developmental things as well. These are some of the first times he's put two words together. And Amazing. it's just enjoying those times where you see your kids improving and, and just enjoy the time that you have with them. And uh, it just makes it really sweet to, to know that. But just, you know, again, break it down in bite-sized pieces. There are people who you can talk to, to reach out to, who can point you to resources that you need. So you're not alone. We want to be here to help. I love that we have the perspective of two dads 
during this interview. I think that's rare and really important. Um, and then the breaking it down in bite-sized bits, that's exactly what the TSC Navigator does. That's why we created the tool so that we empower those in the community to, to take uh, the diagnosis in, in bite-sized chunks. And if you want to know this much, then you control how much information you receive. If you want to know everything, we certainly have a robust website, but it's, it's, as you said, Dave, enjoy the, enjoy your child, enjoy getting that guitar playing bad to the bone. Like <laughs> that is so spectacular and special. And I'm, I'm really, really glad that, that you shared that. Um, I have an, another question either for Dave or Rachel. Um, in your experience with TSC, what have been the most promising research breakthroughs that, that you've witnessed? Certainly the PREVENT trial has been huge and all that they've moved forward and learned through that. Um, the Everlimus, as Dave mentioned, NOAA is on. Um, that one's huge. And then the Epidiolex being FDA approved was a huge deal. Excellent. I would say those are our three. And, you know, there are about 7,000 recognized rare disease today. 5% have a treatment. TSC has three FDA approved treatments. It's, yeah. it's kind of unbelievable to look back over the last decade. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think just going back to, to what Dave had said about um, just it, it can be overwhelming, but to it's um, calming in a sense to at points to know that if you want to go get the information, you can do it at your, your own pace and, and know that it's out there. And, and if you don't want to just read a web, website, you there's tons of people within the community that you can talk to. Um, and, and that's that's. Um, really been an amazing part of, of knowing that that people are out there and willing to share their story and um and sometimes that's better than like I said being in front of your computer screen with right. no one to really talk to it through so um and, and to that how I'll ask how has the TSC alliance been been most helpful to your family Dave, you want to take this one? I'm hoping Noah. <laughs> sure, absolutely. <laughs> um, so how it's been most beneficial, uh, when you think of, of lining up the doctors versus um, for the, the care and where you're looking at going for research and not just research, but for um, getting that care, it's really important for you know, us to say, hey, is this, a, is this someone who um, has experience with TSC? Is it someone who um, is trusted by an organization who's been around TSC a lot longer than what we have? And so having the resource of being able to put you in contact with a doctor who gets it um, and who will have an understanding that uh, again, not everyone knows even what TSC is. So when you're trying to explain it to just a normal healthcare provider, it's nice when someone walks into the room and says, your son has, you know, I, I see from your charts, your son has this, and we're familiar with this. And these are some things that uh, we know during the stage of his journey, you know, that he's going to be dealing with and have you been informed about X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And having that perspective where you're not having to explain what TSC is to a doctor and they're saying this is what we're noticing during the stage it's very comforting it also know it help is helps you to be aware that uh, this individual speaks your language and yeah. um, they they care about you and we have found through the TSC's alliance and how they've you know looking at different clinics that they show that um, they, you know, have a relationship with or have a TSC clinic, it has paid dividends for us and having a doctor and a nurse who care. And we're forever grateful for that connection that was made that we wouldn't have had without the TSC Alliance and putting us with those connections that were made. 
So we, we would say that we have the best doctor and nurse. Um, you guys can fight me on that. I'm not going to say who it is, <laughs> but I mean, everyone has their preferences, but ours are right. Um, and so we just appreciate the TS Alliance, uh, TSC Alliance, and just making that first introduction. And they handheld us at the beginning of things. And it, it shows that they care and every doctor doesn't have to do that. And they took their time out to, to help us in that journey, explain things at the beginning, even though, and this is a crazy thing is it was a, during a snowstorm that it happened, that things shut down for them. And yet we were there the next day and, and they were there to, to, to walk us through those initial um, diagnosis, you know, th this is what, what to expect and things like that. So where do you, where do you get that people, you know, and the TSC has, has definitely aligned uh, great individuals who, who really care about the patient, the family, and holistically how to approach that. So just having that connection between the patient and the doctor has been invaluable. So we definitely appreciate it and grateful for the TSC Alliance for that. Thank you for sharing that. I do think we have the most compassionate clinicians. They really do go above and beyond your example, Dave, about talking to you in a snowstorm and showing up the next day. I mean, that's how I think of our, our clinicians. Yeah. It's, it's really incredible. Okay. We got one question left. We hope to see Noah on camera. He's hiding. He's playing hide and seek. I think <laughs> I'm hoping I get a little bad to the bone, but, um, so the, it's okay. The last question is, what are the three words that you would use to describe the TSC community? Sorry about that. So okay. um, definitely the word that you use, compassionate, I think of um, our community, just supporting each other and um, reaching out to encourage and all of that. There is nothing like, I don't think the TSC community. Um, so the compassionate, um, is what comes to mind. Inspirational, um, just all of the things that different families deal with and um, how they push through and then resilient. Um, those are the three. I, I love resilient. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it's a really good one. Thank you guys so much for being with us today, for sharing your story. And I just, I adore you guys. You know that you have a very, very special place in my heart. And thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks for the invite. We definitely appreciate it. Thanks. Give my love to Noah. <laughs> wow. I know, right? Yeah. What an interview. <laughs> There's, they are so inspirational. Yeah. Pretty, pretty amazing family for sure. Yes. Um, nice to, to, to hear their story. Um, and yeah, like I, I, before this, I went back on like Facebook and was yeah. looking at sort of our connect. This was the first time that I spoke with them, oh but, my gosh. but we've been Facebook friends for Forever. two years or so. <laughs> um, so it, it certainly nice to, to hear their, theirs and, and Noah's story and, and really, um, the, the benefits that the Alliance and community has uh, afforded them and where you sometimes don't know where to look for help. I, I think the Alliance helps fill in those gaps for a lot of families. And now you're, you are the TSC <laughs> Alliance. So yeah. how about that? All right. Well, this week is all about interviewing both our national partners and community members to give a glimpse into the life of those living with, living with and overcoming TSC, right. triumph over TSC. Um, tomorrow, we are joined by Rebecca Burns from UCB and Iris Mustich, who is an adult regional coordinator and a scientist and an adult living with TSC. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Pretty amazing. And then I'm just going to put a little plug in for Wednesday. Wednesday, we're going to be joined by Jazz Pharmaceuticals, Tim Hollick, and Greg Grunberg. I'm so excited about Greg Grunberg. For uh, those of you who may or may not know, he was on Alias. He's been in Star Wars. He was the limo driver in A Star is Born. He also has an adult son living with epilepsy. So he's coming to share a little bit about a new series that he's doing. And that day we will also be joined by Emily Fan, who is one of our future leaders. Yeah. 
So pretty exciting. Yeah, that is exciting. Yeah. Okay. You want to get one more shout out to our national sponsors? Absolutely. absolutely. So thank you again um, to, to everybody that, that joined us today and, and certainly our national sponsors, uh, Marinus Pharmaceuticals, Jazz Pharmaceuticals, Nobel Pharma, Ovid Therapeutics, UCB, Upshire Smith, Mass Mutual, and Bridge Bio. Thank you all. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for making this week, this fundraiser and this community so whole and special. We're so grateful for you. We'll see you tomorrow. You'll see them tomorrow. I will see them tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you.